Thank you very much, uh, Speaker Quinn. I really appreciate those comments. Uh, most importantly, the competition that uh, cities always have, as, as well as ideas coming from other cities. And as mayor, uh, I've, ha I've traveled not only here in you know, great, our great country, but throughout the world, and have conferences with other mayors, learning from them uh, in regards to new ideas and procedures and, and, and looking at things completely different, which is really important. And that's why forums like this are, are to me, are, are not only uh, more educational and, and most importantly coming back to my city in regards to uh, new ideas and, and being much more creative. And that's why uh, improving the environment, as uh, the speaker pointed out, uh, uh, is the key of the future of cities because I, I grew up in a city all my life. I, I really believe that the uh, nature can coexist in urban environments. And far too long we looked the other way. Uh, everybody did. In environmentalists were someplace else. They're outside cities. Uh, we didn't think the cities could change, but cities are changing. And my city is changing because we believe it's the economic future of our city and it's directly uh, linked to all of our efforts to protect and enhance our environment. So since I have been mayor, my belief, government has to lead by example. I think people are tired of government telling everybody what to do, exempting themselves. And whether it's the state, local, federal governments, they always tell you what to do, but they don't do it. And so in Chicago, what we have said, we will lead by example. We will show what city can do in all aspects of city government. And that includes the government itself, the Board of Education, the city colleges, the libraries, the aviation department, the parks. So we're on one agenda. Uh, and, and people want that. They want to say, if you're building a police, a fire station, a school, is it green? Simple as that. Why are you telling me to build green and you're exempting yourself? So we really believe that uh, uh, the key is leading by example. And secondly, is the small things in life. I mean. They may be small to people, but whether it's planting a tree or just creating a little open space or investing in resources uh, to remove pollution from the air, encourage all the construction uh, uh, buildings in the downtown area, their smart environment, uh, in the long run, truly enhances uh, uh, the quality of life for all the residents. And I'm very proud of the leadership that many people have taken, not just myself, uh, the academic world, the policy people, the business community, uh, elected officials, uh, uh, all coming together and say, let's stay on this agenda. How can we basically improve the quality of life of our city? And I'm proud that we, st we started to act uh, many, many years ago in ways that many cities are just beginning to appreciate the environment. It is clear to me that the future belongs to the cities that recognize the two desires of modern day men and women. They want to live in a metropolitan area because they will offer more opportunities, more choices, and more people. They also want open space, nice parks, clean beaches, jogging paths, bike trails, flowers, trees, grass. Of course, they want clean, pure water and clean, <coughs> pure uh, air. They really are concerned about the global environment issues, as every public opinion poll has pointed out. In Chicago, the environment is a major component of our strategy to attract people and jobs and to remain competitive, we believe, in a global economy. So we have undertaken hundreds, and I mean hundreds of initiatives, aimed at making Chicago the most environmentally friendly city in the world. So before I talk about the green roofs, I, I like to mention just a few uh, ways Chicago has led by example over the years to improve the uh, natural environment and make people lives much better. Last fall, we un unveiled the Chicago Climate Action Plan, a very comprehensive, detailed strategy to help lower uh, greenhouse gas emissions and address climate change throughout the entire city. And that includes the business community, citizens' re institutions, and city government itself. Other cities have similar goals, but Chicago Plan is the first to both identify emission sources, anticipate impacts of climate change, and of course, propose ideas, including green roofs, of course, that specifically respond to that research. And much of it was research oriented, which is really important. It prevents a menu of options that can be implemented over a period of time to address the sources of greenhouse gas emissions. Our climate action plan is a result of a task force made up of private businesses, city, local, state, and federal governments, community organizations, academics, foundations, civic organiz organizations, because we understand that government 
can't solve environmental challenges by itself. The entire community must be engaged. We also are aggressively pursuing green infrastructure throughout the city to keep clean storm water out of our sewers, reduce the urban heat island impact. Since I became mayor, we planted over half a million trees, landscaped more than 80 miles of medians on major streets of our city. On Arbor Day last month, we announced the Chicago Tree Initiative, which brings together resources of 20 agencies, organizations to plant, care for, and advocate trees. We also hope to inspire a civic and social movement that will involve the city, green industry, business community, and the private homeowners in improving our urban forest. And also an example uh, dealing with the city, we have the largest convention center. And for many years, the rainwater would go into a combined water and uh, sewer system, over 55 million gallons of water. But today, that clean rainwater goes right into Lake Michigan. We save an enormous amount of energy costs and other costs related to the combined water and sewer system. Chicago has over 1,900 miles of alleyways. Alleys are very important, the most of any city in the world. Through our Green Alley program, we have tested a, a range of techniques, such as permeable pavers, permeable concrete. We are now undertaking techniques of the standard operating procedure for rebuilding our alleys and many construction projects so that the rainwater does not go into a combined water or sewer system. Green buildings are an important part of our environment efforts. As we rehab existing city buildings and construct new ones, we follow the green building policies. Our Center for Green Technology, a rehab of a former industrial building, was the first municipal building in the world to be awarded a platinum rating by the U.S. Green Building Council. We have established that alone. We bring in architects, engineers, government people, construction people in regards to seminars continually, uh, in regards to green technology programs in the city of Chicago. It's an educational center as well. We have established a green business strategy in which we work with companies, Chicago companies, to help them save money by becoming sensitive to the environment. And we go into the companies and work with them. I pointed out uh, uh, the major expansion of McCormick Place. It uh, pointed out 55 million gallons of rainwater. We built a 3,000-foot tunnel to carry all the clean rainwater into, our, into Great Lake Michigan. Our rain barrel, we're very proud of our rain barrel program, provides subsidized rain barrels to residents, encourage them to both conserve water, disconnect their downspouts to keep storm water out of the sewer system. Through, through, through many of these programs, I will mention Chicago is now has over 600 green roofs completed or underway, totaling more than 7 million square feet. How did Chicago become a leader among green roofs? My interest in them was really sparked on a trip uh, when I took to Germany uh, many years ago in Hamburg, Germany and saw how the Germans incorporated them into their cities and some of their public buildings. Then we planted our first rooftop garden city hall in the year 2000. It's 21,000 square feet with nearly 100 different species of plants, a number of trees, and also we have beehives, which, uh, which produce honey that is sold to benefit after school programs for teens. And we build, we build beehives in all of our, many of our public buildings in Chicago. And all that money is uh, the honey is sold, and it goes into an after-school program uh, for teens in our city. That green roof started a movement that is going stronger uh, than ever nine years later. By the way, when people ask me if green roofs really work, I tell them about one on top of City Hall. We share the building with the county. Our half of the roof is green. Of course, the county is not. We monitor the conditions, of course. I know it's no surprise to you that a, on a 90-degree day, temperature on our side of the roof is about 90 degrees. On the county side, the roof is about 170 degrees. And that's proof, uh, proof our green roof is conserving energy, saving money, and of course, helping our roof last longer. We have promoted the construction of green roofs through a combination of requirements and incentives induced in a number of policies administered by various city departments. There is a sustainability development policy which places green roof uh, requirements, including green, uh, including green building requirements, including green roofs, on a project that receives city funds, bonds, tax breaks. 
Nearly all the requirements include some form of a green roof. The Green Roof Improvement Program provided matching grants to, const to construct green roofs on existing buildings in the central area of the city. It was funded by a community development tool known as tax increment financing. So we have, one, we have a number of historical buildings, older buildings in the downtown area, and some even built uh, uh, up in the 70s. And how can we basically keep their viability because many of them lose tenants to newer buildings? And so that is the way, how do you keep them uh, environmentally sensitive that they can bring tenants back into these buildings? And it's a wonderful program. Building owners apply for financial assistance to the Green Roof Improvement Program. It is granted uh, if they meet a number of criteria, such as size, visibility of the roof, a commitment to collect data about stormwater, heat island mitigation, and several others. We've also established a green permit program that provides expedited permit review and financial incentives to encourage green buildings. Of course, green roofs are one of the menu items that helps a builder gain expedited review. We have a green roof grant program that in the past has made $5,000 grants to assist residents and small commercial owners with the installation of green roofs in Chicago. Our storm water ordinance identifies green roofs as one of the ways in which developers may meet the requirement of the ordinance. And the city awards density bonuses to buildings with green roofs, which allow developers to increase the amount of space and a parcel to be developed. As I, as I hope you see, we approach Green Roofs as a collaborative effort with builders, commercial building owners, managers, owners of residential properties. The key to moving forward on the issue of sustainability is the cooperation and reaching out to people. It's not enough for local government to work with each other. They also have to work with the business, non-for-profits, interest groups, and of course, community organizations. Our progress on environmental issues could not have achieved without the partnership that we sought and created on every level of community, from block clubs to the largest corporations. As you may know, there's no better example uh, of that than the Millennium Park in a downtown area, which returned 16 acres of ground covered with railroad tracks into the nation's largest green roof. And the process created a wonderful public space that adds to the quality of life in Chicago and of course, builds pride in our city. Our local businesses and non-for-profit organizations donated more than 200 million to help build the park. That shows if you can get everyone on the same page, aim towards achieving the same goals, there's practically no limit to what you can accomplish. Not too long ago, the Wall Street Journal ran an article that said, and I quote, Chicagoans have transformed from Carl Sandburg's brawling city, a big shoulder, in what is probably the most beautiful of post-industrial cities, end of quote. And that's a statement that will grab the attention not only of prospective tourists or business travelers, but also international companies that are looking for new business locations. But most of all, it is a statement that tells us that we are doing a good job of addressing environmental issues in a way that moves us towards a overall goal of improving the quality of life for every citizen of our great city. Every day in government, we have to make difficult choices between what we want to do and what we have to do and keep the interests of the taxpayers foremost in our minds. And this has led us to a very important conclusion in Chicago. Environmentalism makes economic sense. When a city exists in harmony with the environment, it is simply looks better and feels better. And we know that shows up, of course, in our financial bottom line. Cities are no longer the enemies of the natural environment. They're leading the way in preserving, I believe, and protecting it. In doing so, we firmly believe that we're improving public health, we are saving money, we are creating jobs, and of course, enhancing the quality of life and leaving a la lasting legacy to future generations of our city. Thank you very much.